Welcome. I am going to be talking tonight about something that is so important. Not that everything I talk about isn't important, it's all important. But this is such a, in today's busy lifestyle, being able to stop and think is so important. It not only improves your mental health, your creativity, your intelligence, all those great things, but it also really plays a role in preventing things like dementias and Alzheimer's and so on. So we are going to have a discussion together about thinker moments, and then I'm going to answer a couple of questions at the end. Okay, so let's let's begin. Now, just before I start, is I've got a whole chapter on thinker moments in this book, Think, Learn, Succeed, that you can get on my website. And anywhere books are sold, basically, but you could get it at drleaf.com. And there's a whole chapter in there on what I'm going to talk about tonight. So I'm actually going to talk to you from this chapter because I think it's really good to, I had it in, let me get it back to the beginning. I think there's just so much to tell you and I don't want to miss anything. And I'm going to do a ex- couple of exercises with you as well. One towards the middle and then a few towards the end. So let's begin. Okay, so. As we know, in today's life, there's just a constant stream of information. Now, every generation faces something. So it's not like this is worse than before. It's just every generation faces something different. But what we are facing is a constant stream of information and technology that enables us to be caught in that stream of information. Technology is wonderful. It, as these things are great to help us connect and to improve and to grow. This is advancement. We need this. The key is that when we have these kinds of advances that immerse us in information like technology does, we need to also make sure we are managing the technology or managing this stream of information. So we have seen a shift in how people think over this generation due to the fact that people don't know how to manage technology. Now, I'm not asking you to put down your cell phone for hours at a time. I'm just advising you to start introducing the concept of thinker moments into your life. There's really a multitude of applications, but thinker moments are where you spend just top, I mean, sort of from the top and then go into detail, where you'd spend 30 seconds to 10 minutes and anything in between periodically during the course of the day to just switch off to the external and switch on to the internal. We're going to discuss what this does in the brain, what it activates and the mind-brain connection. But taking that, giving yourself that precious time is going to reboot your brain to the point where you are bringing very, very healthy balance into your psycho-neurobiological network, your mind-brain body. You're bringing health into your brain and the more you do it, the healthier you'll get. So let's let's have a look at just some of the, the different things that it can do. I think also... A lot of what happens in this world is that we're so connected that we actually can be disconnected. So we're so connected, but we're so connected in a surface way. And our mind-brain-body network is not designed for just a constant stream of information. The mind-brain-body is designed for deep thinking. And this is what the thinker moments are part of. That's not the only way to deep think. Obviously, we're deep thinking about content. But specifically in the context of thinker moments, it's taking short little bursts of time where you're switching off and switching on to the internal. And that is enabling you to allow yourself to retrain yourself to think deeper. When you think deeper, you send waves of energy through the middle of your brain, through an area called the default mode network. And that is a very important network that we constantly reboot And if we don't reboot that, we start straining our brain tremendously. And then that backfires in, in, that's a network, but it impacts then the different um, cells of the brain, the structures of the brain, the different parts of the brain going, um, going up into, then our systems of our body. And it has a a effect going up into the big, big structures and then all the way back down to the subatomic structures. Let me ask you a question. When was the last time that you literally and figuratively just sit and just took anything between 30 seconds to 10 minutes to just let your mind wander and think without grabbing your phone, without doing something. Just sit down or stand, just stare at something and just let eyes open or eyes closed. You know, there's that famous, uh, Rodin's famous um, sculpt, a statue, The Thinker, you know, just thinking. When was the last time that you were, that you did that? 
Maybe you did it today. Maybe you're doing it on a regular basis. Well, that is fantastic. But most people, according to the research we currently are, and just looking at my experience as a therapist and the work that I do, this is a problem in the world today. So the need to be constantly occupied is actually there from this, from this constant stream of activity. Now your brain loves stimulation. Don't get me wrong. And your brain, your, you know, you can see it with young children being loving what playing on cell phones, but it's not just young children. It's us old. It's all ages get very stimulated. But the problem is that if you just, the brain just does what the mind tells it to do. So if you, if you just feed the brain with all the stimulation that it likes, but you don't manage it, the brain gets into a very negative, well, negative is the wrong word. It gets into a very chaotic cycle and things get very entangled down, right down to the level of what we call the microtubules, which are these little things inside the nerve cells of the brain where memories are formed and they're like little branching things and they grow and they're constantly changing. This is literally at the level of neuroplasticity. And um, they are inside the little branches called dendrites that are on the ends of nerve cells. And these are constantly changing and assembling and reassembling based on what you're thinking. But they are, they are the, the way that they're structured and the, and the way that they are supposed to be stimulated is of a constant stream of information, but a stream of information that's not just firing bits and pieces of different things, but it's where information is brought in and then there's time to actually process that information. Otherwise, you build a chaotic jumble. And that in itself creates a feedback loop that can make you feel anxious, depressed, frustrated, edgy, snappy, irritable, burnt out, if that is a continual ongoing process. A really interesting series of 11 studies was done by the university, combined University of Virginia and Harvard. And they took a whole lot of participants and the age ranges were from 18 through 77. Okay. And they put them in a room and the instruction was to just sit and think. And the periods of time were between six and 15 minutes. Okay. Six and 15 minutes. Well, the major, they just had to think and ponder. There was nothing, no cell phones, no TV, no computers, nothing. Them a chair in a room and they just had to think. And the majority of people, the vast majority of people hated it. And this was ages 18 through 77. So it's not just youngsters. It's, you know, this is, a, this affects our entire generation. In fact, so the majority of participants didn't enjoy being alone with their thoughts. Well, some, there was a little shocking device hidden in this room and some even preferred and they found it they were so bored that they actually found that and they preferred shocking themselves to just sitting <laughs> and doing nothing so and just sitting and using the imagination for a few minutes so it's you know there's a lot lot a lot of implications of that study but it's just telling us that we're in a day and age where we've distorted what the brain actually needs what the mind brain body network the connection between the mind brain and body what it actually needs and we've kind of distorted that and when you distort something, you think you want something, but you don't want, you actually don't. You know, it's kind of like it creates that it's sort of addictive action, which is not a disease. It is a entanglement of all these down to the level of these microtubules inside dendrites, which are tops of nerve cells, as I, as I mentioned. So although we, the other thing is we, we think of it, we're so connected in this day and age, but we're so connected that we disconnected because we're not having deep conversation enough deep conversations. I shouldn't say we're not having any. We're not having enough really deep conversations where you're really thinking and listening to other people. So the every generation, honestly, as I mentioned, what it means to be an individual in society changes, sometimes dramatically, yet the ability to think about stuff, that is something we're always going to need, no matter what. So if we are in a generation like we are now, where technology is providing information at such a fast speed and is so accessible, we need to know how to manage that so that we can get the benefit out of that, you know, make the best use of it. And think of moments is, it can help us do that to, to be able to think, process and have a balanced life. So think of moments are not an option. They're an integral part of our mental self care regimen. So the brain needs thinker time for its actual health. Brain health. It needs thinker time. It, it, your brain. Is, is your brain literally gets exhausted and it needs to reboot that default mode network in the middle, which kind of drives a lot of the brain. The net, that network is it needs to be plugged in and, and recharged. So the, remember as well, the brain is neuroplastic. 
you hear me say that all the time, the mind, brain, body, it's neuroplastic. So whatever you're thinking about the most is what's growing. We merge with our environments. So if we're merging with fast speed action, we're getting a stimulation, but we're getting a stimulation that's creating this entangled feedback loop. And entangled is the word that I keep on using. And that's what happens. It's not that your brain wants that. It's not that your mind, brain, and body network want to be entangled. But if you keep feeding without resting, the entanglement creates more entanglement, just gets more and more knotted. Okay. So we, the neuroplasticity aspect is that we merge with what we're focusing on the most. We're merging, we're building it in. And if it is unmanaged, it's an entangled merging. Okay. So we need downtime to function optimally. Let me say that again. We need downtime to function optimally. I'm saying that to myself as well as you. We need downtime. I have found that the days that I get so caught up and so busy without taking those little think a moment, 30 seconds to a minute. And if I have more, you know, depending on what time of the day it is, I'll, I'll do at least one 10 minute think a moment in a day. But if I don't to do that, I get so flustered and so thrown by all the things that I have to do. And I know how to get back quickly. And it's those think a moments. You know, so sometimes I just go into the bathroom or go into, go into wherever that you can just have a few moments just to switch off. Even if it's just, okay, making some coffee or something like that where you can just switch off and not think about what's going on and just take yourself out of that environment mentally as well and just switch off to the external. So we, we have to reboot our brain. And that's what happens when we're alone with our thoughts, when you are alone with your thoughts. Let's just think a moment. That's how you are rebooting your brain. Rebooting your brain is when you are alone with your thoughts, which is fantastic, okay? So we, contrary to popular belief, when we are alone with our thoughts, when we switch off to the external and switch on to the internal, we don't, it doesn't mean that we are, like your brain just stops, your mind just stops, your your mind never stops. Your non-conscious mind works 24-7. And because it works 24-7 through the brain, it's always making the brain work. The brain works differently when you are asleep or when you're awake, but it's always going, okay? So the mind doesn't grind to a halt when you do a think a moment, when you're doing so-called nothing. So you have these spontaneous thought processes, including mind-wandering, creative thinking, daydreaming. Those are evidence of a think a moment. So when you go into these think a moments, your mind will wonder. You'll daydream. You'll, you'll have a flow of thoughts. Maybe some thoughts will come up repeatedly. You'll find yourself being creative. I mean, if you're stuck with work and you're stuck with trying to work out something, I think a moment's a great way to reboost your creativity. Okay, so this type of internal thinking plays a huge role in contributing to the, it plays a huge important role in contributing to the richness of intentional thinking and subsequent learning. So let me, let me explain that. So when you, when you switch off to the external and onto the internal and get that creative mind wandering daydreaming going, you're rebooting and doing all this wonderful stuff. You are actually making your next intention, whatever you do next, whatever you think about next, whatever you learn next, whatever you do next, that much more enriched and robust and effective and creative. So learning in the, when you, when you are doing something new or doing anything, when you, when you come out of a thinker moment, you're going to be more effective at it. So if we, with, without the spontaneous thinking mode, we wouldn't be able to reach insights. So you may not be consciously doing thinker moments as much as you should do. And as, as you can hear, we should be training ourselves to do these as much as possible. We, we still, when we have like an insight or a flash of insight or suddenly a this deep understanding, those generally, if you had to, just be more aware of it, you'd find that they would follow maybe even a 10 second think a moment. So that without having these think a moments, you wouldn't be able to reach those highs or get those deep insights. So what I'm doing is saying what we do naturally to introduce that into your life as an actual, as something that you build in on top of the ones that just happen without you really, that are driven by your non-conscious, that you consciously add those to your life as a practice. And that then works with what uh, enhances and makes that, that whole process even more robust. So thinker moments actually increase and develop our intelligence and the efficiency of our thinking. So if you want, intelligence is not limited. Intelligence, you're as intelligent as you want to be. 
So the more think and moments you have, the more you actually increase and develop your intelligence because you're developing your insight and you're giving your brain a chance to disentangle and new information to come in and to make connections between new information. That's what that rebooting is doing. And that's going to lead to intelligence. And the more you do that, the more intelligent you become. There was a 2017 study from the Georgia Institute of Technology that suggests that daydreaming during meetings at school, for example, indicates that someone is smart and creative. So someone who can daydream their zone out of conversations and in, maybe just for 10 seconds, but it's like they're thinking about something and then going out and coming back in. And the, the, like the absent-minded professor kind of thing, off in their own world for a few moments and then coming back in, seeming oblivious to surroundings and then coming back in. That student or work colleague who seems to check out mentally for a few moments and seems like they're not focusing and then they come back in very often. They come back in with some amazing statement or some deep insight. I mean, they may ask you something like, what did you just say? And you may, they may just need a prompt, but they were thinking about what came just before and put that together and get deep insight. So that those, the more you develop and practice thinker moments, the more you can take advantage of that kind of a function, which is really helpful. Then there was a British Columbia University, a University of British Columbia review that, that basically highlighted the importance of allowing our mind to just think, the mind-brain-body connection to just think. And they basically show that thoughts, basically the studies show that thoughts move freely and some thoughts, and some thoughts seem to be stuck on the same concept. So sometimes when you, your, your thoughts will just go from one to the next and they seem to be so no, like totally random, like no association. Sometimes there will be a flow that there is an association, but they seem to be flowing. So there's the flowing type, and then there's the other ones that are the ones that keep coming, that you get stuck on, that keep coming with the same thought over and over, and maybe the same kind of sentence and the same structure, and it seems to be slight variations, but it's the same thing that keeps coming back. So what I found very, very, very helpful with my patients and also extremely helpful to get you going in a neurocycle is to if to do to do a thinker moment and to to then close your eyes and I'm going to explain it and then I'm going to actually make you do it. So let me explain it first. We, this is our first little exercise for the evening. Okay. So you're going to basically you're going to close your eyes and I'm going to give you like a minute and I want you just to even 30 seconds. I think we'll just do it for 30 seconds and you're just going to see what thoughts come out and what thoughts are going through your mind. And then you're going to stop and analyze them and you see, are they free flowing? Did you go from one thought to the next? Or is there something that's come up repeatedly? And then has that, that thought that's come up repeatedly, has that come up? Is this something you recognize? Does this happen quite often? You know, how long does it, ha- how long does it happen for and so on? And then you can grab a piece of paper and a pen or just type into your computer or your phone or whatever. And then just make a note of the free flowing thoughts. Just, just do it on shorthand and then, then just of the thoughts that are repetitive. And it might just be one of those and the free flow could have been, you know, just very general. You just, you know, you can do this on your own again and take a bit more time. I'd recommend you redo this exercise and you redo this exercise for in about 10 minutes. But right now we're going to do it together for around about 30 seconds. Okay. So get your pen, get your paper or get your iPhone or your computer ready. And so then, and I'm going to ask you to close your eyes. I'm going to time it for 30 seconds. And in that 30 seconds, I just want you to let your mind wander. Just let it wander all over the place. And then I'm going to ask you a couple of questions after that. Okay, so you're all ready? Okay, close your eyes now for 30 seconds. Thirty seconds never felt longer, did it? Okay. So now I want to ask you: Can you stand back now and observe yourself and tell? And you don't have to tell me; just tell yourself which of those thought, which of the thoughts just seem to be flowing all over the place. Okay. Think of that. Were there some that just flowed all over the place? What was that flow? Okay.
Can you write that down? Type it in your phone, whatever. Give you a few seconds to do that. Okay. Were there any thoughts that came up that were repetitive? Maybe that's all you had. Maybe you only had free flowing. But, or maybe you just have a, had a thought that just kept coming up over and over and over again. I had both. I had a thought that came up and it almost felt like, I almost felt like, and I was timing it and I had my eyes open and I was watching. And the way it felt for me, and I've done this often so I know how to look at it, I felt like I was looking inside, it was like looking inside a, a cave. And down the one side, there was this, all these words coming up on the wall of this, these thoughts going all over the place of just things that had happened during the day and how that stimulated some stuff actually from the past and whatever. And then there's one particular thought that was coming up on the other wall. It was very clear, it was very distinct, very clear what it was. It just kept coming up and coming up and coming up in the same form. So that's what I mean. So can you distinguish? Did you have both? Whatever you had, just if you can write down if you had thought that kept but that was very distinct that kept repeating itself you can write that down now what will be very helpful for you to do is to evaluate oops i've got a note here that i wanted to i want you to evaluate when you have time what you've written down go maybe after this live go and take 10 minutes if you can and break it up into a couple of one or two minute sessions and just and maybe put your alarm on and just close your eyes and just let your mind wander. And then same thing, switch off to the external, switch on to the internal, mind wandering, daydreaming, ruminating thoughts, whatever's coming up. Just let it happen. And then compare it to what we did now quickly with this little exercise and then add to it. Whatever else comes up, add to it. And then you could start evaluating, looking at that thing. Okay, this thought, which thoughts are keeping me stuck? This seems to be, maybe there's two thoughts that are coming up a lot and they're quite negative. And a negative thought may be something like, I can never get this right. This is never going to get better. Is there ever going to be hope? I can't handle this. It's going to happen again. It's inevitable. Those kinds of, see if you have those kinds of thoughts, I'm just giving you the first part, inevitable, blah, 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 whatever it is, happens again, blah, blah, blah. You fill in the details. But that kind of, Prefix that sort of start. Do you have any of those? Write them down. Order them, which is the most dominant of all of those. And evaluate those and say, okay, are these keeping me stuck? Did I have more of these than the free-flowing ones? Do you, how do, and take each one and, and say, how does it make you feel? And, and look at your warning signals. Gather awareness of your warning signals, your emotions, your behaviors around that particular thought your bodily sensations, your perspective, and then decide of those which one actually is something that needs a neurocycle that you can evaluate to then go through the process of the neurocycle. So this is a great way to find what thought to work on, okay? And the free-flowing ones, have a look at them and just see the direction and enjoy the direction. It's kind of like a dream all over the place and see if they evaluate those. Is there something from there that that's, can help you or how does it make you feel? You can have a thought that pops up on the other side that's not necessarily always toxic. You may have a really good thought. Maybe something really great's happened and you just keep, it just keeps coming up. So the whole thing is write them down and evaluate them and then use, move into a neurocycle with them. Sometimes those thoughts that are in the free flowing can be great acts of reaches. There might be a little statement there and that may be just, Hey, this is a great thing that I could build into an active reach. Sometimes the thoughts that you, that keep coming up are, healthy ones and those could be maybe a prompt to turn into an active reach as well.